The Consequences of Lust Lust is something that we must deal with in our lives. Lust is dangerous. It is a dangerous thing for three reasons. Reason number one. If lust is left unchecked, it always, 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 and I mean always, grows. Reason number two. Lust is a secret battle. You can struggle with lust for years, for decades even, and no one can know about it. You can struggle with it for years, and absolutely no one, and I mean no one, can even know that you are struggling with lust. Reason 3 At points, we as humans have a way of trying to justify our sins. Everyone tends to see a sin that they don't commit as being worse than the one that they do commit. I personally found myself struggling with lust, and I would find myself justifying that sin, or masking it to be something that it isn't. I didn't even believe that I was lusting after someone. I have heard a saying that says, the heart wants what it wants. But the truth is, as a believer, we know that we can't make a decision based on our heart. Jeremiah 17 verse 9 The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Following the heart without constraining the heart to the word of God will lead a person to rebellion, disobedience, and great sorrow. This is why you find people looking at a woman lustfully, or looking at the opposite sex lustfully, and all they think about is sexual immorality, and they find themselves convincing themselves that they are not lusting after them. You try to convince yourself that you are just admiring their beauty. It's natural. You know, some people are even in the habit of looking lustfully at the opposite sex and then be thanking God for creating them. They say different ungodly things while looking at someone lustfully and then attach the name of God. This is the exact kind of lust we should be looking out for. This is a secret sin that is destroying people internally and they cannot open their mouths to tell people and ask for help. You may think this only happens to the young Christians who are not strong yet, but the truth is that for many pastors out there, many church leaders out there, they are suffering from this same sin. You may think this only happens to men, but that is not true. Women burn and struggle with lust just as much as men. When you see the opposite sex and you are looking too much, beware of it, because that type of behavior is what feeds lust. You don't have to look and then begin to fantasize and daydream about that person. If you see your mind and your thoughts going where it shouldn't go, bring your mind back to the Word of God. Philippians 4 verse 8 Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Jesus said, you don't have to sleep with a woman or the opposite sex before you commit sexual immorality. Looking at them lustfully has placed you in the same category as sleeping with them. You already have sin in your heart. The one who commits sexual immorality and the one who looks lustfully at the opposite sex have both defiled their hearts. They have defiled the temple of God. Are you still suffering from this secret sin? Lust? Are you still struggling with this sin? Maybe you look at pornographic content and you lust after all these people who are in it. It is a secret sin. This is the time to adjust yourself. This is the time for you to start doing what is right. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 18 Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. 
The Bible says to flee. The Bible did not say you should walk away. It did not say you should negotiate. It did not say you should just give lust a minute in your heart. It says to flee. You must run from every appearance of evil. You must run from every appearance of lust. You must run from any appearance of sexual immorality. You need to start running now, before it is too late. If you look at the world today, you will see that sexual immorality is growing. Sexual immorality is now an acceptable currency in some cases. Sexual immorality is not something that will appear in the lives of people just like that. It is the result of that secret sin, lust, that has been in people's hearts for a long time. If you don't know, I will tell you that there are dangers of lust. If you continue with this sin, you will get to the dangerous zone of lust. What are the dangers of lust? 1. It brings death. James 1 verses 13 to 15 Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted, when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. The first thing about this is that lust is a sin, and we know what the Bible says about sin. The wages of sin is death. Sin doesn't lead to anything else but death, except if one is saved. The Bible says that when one is tempted and falls into the temptation, they would be drawn away in their lust. This is the first step of this lust resulting in death. When you allow this secret sin in you, it will draw you towards itself. After this first stage, when the lust has been conceived, it will bring sin. This is when one will go ahead and commit sexual immorality physically. Now the next is damage which includes death if no repentance. Lust has destroyed the lives of many people. It has destroyed the careers of many people. A lust that was not destroyed before it birthed sin has destroyed many homes today in the world. At the end of it, lust will bring destruction. Great men and great women have fallen because of sexual immorality. There are people who have lost their lives due to their lusts. There are people who are in jail right now because of their lusts. Some people have destroyed their marriages and have lost many things in their lives. Some people are currently regretting they followed lust. If you don't want to be like this, run. How many of us are ready to be Joseph in this generation? How many of us can flee from sexual immorality? How many of us can flee lust? The Bible commanded that we should flee and pray. It's what we must do all the time. The devil is planting many things and many people in different positions just to make us fall into this sin and ruin us. But God is exposing all of that now so that we can escape. Are you ready to escape all that? 2. Lust replaces God in your heart with immoralities. 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 to 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God? And ye are not your own? For ye are brought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body, and in your spirit, which is God's. The place God dwells is in our hearts. God doesn't want to be far from us. The Bible made it clear that the kingdom of God is within us, and it is not outside of us. Luke 17 verses 20 to 21 And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, 
He answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo, here, or lo, there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. God has established his kingdom in you, and when lust enters, when you allow this secret sin to have a place in your heart, you are no longer prioritizing the kingdom of God. This is why all you think is not about God, but about the person you are lusting after. This is also why you will find it hard to do things of God, because you are now prioritizing lust over God. So I ask you today, my friend, who is your God? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Or is lust your God? So I ask you today, my friend, do you love lust more than you love God? Lust is something that will want to take the place of God in your life. Lust is something that comes to dictate your life. It comes to dictate your decisions. This is why Jesus said it is not until you commit sexual immorality that you have sinned, but when you allow lust in your heart. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 3 to 5 For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. It is never too late to send lust out of you now, it is not too late to run away from the secret sin now. It can destroy lives. Once you allow lust to dictate your life, you are opened to the devil, and all kinds of immoralities will start to come in. Don't wait for the perfect time to flee from lust. Don't wait till tomorrow, because tomorrow might be too late to flee. You need to run from it right now. You need to abstain from lust. Look into your life today. What are the things you have been lusting after? Who are the people you have been lusting after? This is the time to tell Jesus to create a clean heart in you. You need the fruit of self-control in you. You need to know how to control yourself. Peter says we must control ourselves because this is important as it helps us to run from sins that can destroy us. 2 Peter 1 verses 5 to 7. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. Paul also writes, that he learned to control himself so that he will not lose that crown that he is racing for. 1 Corinthians 9 verses 24 to 27 Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Don't do this. Misconceptions on Adultery and Fornication Matthew 5:27 through 28 Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Jesus had to clear that thought that it is not only when you sleep with someone outside of your marriage that you have committed adultery, but if you also think of committing adultery in your heart, you have already committed adultery too. Sexual impurity begins in the desires of the heart. We do need to highlight that lustful desires and lustful deeds are two separate things. 
Looking and lusting after a person is a lustful desire, but going into adultery or fornication, that is a lustful deed. So lustful desires and lustful deeds are two separate things. We need to understand this so that we don't misquote the Word of God. Jesus said, look, you can't just say that you don't practice it, but you just think about it. That is not good because it corrupts the mind or the heart, and so if you think of it in your heart, you have already sinned. Jesus made these two things to be a sin, but they are different. The reason why they are different is the consequence of one is greater than the other, although they are both sins according to Jesus. If one commits adultery physically, they have bonded themselves with the person they slept with. They have made themselves to be one because there is a physical connection between them, and this will bring about the spiritual connection too. On the other hand, thinking of committing adultery in your heart alone only corrupts your heart and will not connect you with anyone. This is not an excuse to have evil thoughts because it will also affect your spiritual life, and it is a sin. The reason why it is so important to understand this is because there are people who justify their sins by saying that, I've committed adultery in my heart already, I might as well go ahead and commit it in the physical. And then, they go ahead to commit adultery in the physical. Because they look to commit adultery in their heart, they say they might as well go ahead and commit adultery. No, don't do that. If you commit adultery in your heart, you've sinned, and there are repercussions for that sin. But going on to commit the sin physically is another sin entirely. One is a lustful thought, and one is a lustful deed. Both are bad, and both have different consequences. I am here today to encourage people to flee from sexual immorality. Fornication and adultery all begin with thoughts. No one just wakes up and finds themselves in the act. We can trace back all sexual impurity back to a thought. The first step of adultery or fornication is always the mind thinking about it. This is the stage where it is necessary to kill that spirit and never allow it to grow, but the devil is not giving people the chance, and many people are not helping. They go about saying people who are thinking of committing adultery are the same as those who are committing it physically, and then the devil uses this to capture their hearts and they condemn themselves. They start to believe if they have already sinned, why can't they just go into the real sin? They believe they are already suffering the consequences of the deed of committing the sin, but you are not. Look, many people went into that sin and never came back. Many married people went into adultery. They had the thought just like this, and they gave themselves up, and they entered into adultery, but never came back. Their marriage was destroyed. They lost everything. Adultery is not something to be played with. Adultery will break your marriage. Have you ever seen the pain of a broken marriage? That pain isn't anything you would want to sign up for. Have you ever seen a man mess his marriage up because of adultery, then try to get his wife back? I've seen grown men cry because the full force of the consequences of adultery was hitting them in the face. Once you start to commit adultery, it is so hard to stop. So hard. So hard. I receive letters of people telling me of their struggles. A woman told me that she was faithful to her husband, who was her boyfriend, since they were in high school. They went to college in different states, and she was faithful. They got married after college, and for the first nine years of their marriage, she was faithful. Until she committed adultery one time. Just one time. Now it has been years of her committing adultery. I won't say how many years, but she has been struggling for years with adultery. Don't give adultery the chance. Once you open that door, believe me, Satan will do all he can to make the sin a stronghold. And once he has a stronghold in your life, he won't leave without a fight. He won't give up the territory. Don't even open the door up to sin. And for those of you who believe you can live a promiscuous life before marriage, what makes you think that you will be able to control yourself when you are married? Just because you are married, it doesn't mean you get the superpower of self-control. If you are promiscuous as a single person, more than likely you will be promiscuous when you are married. It becomes a habit, forwarding hitting with this one, and with that one, and with this one. Now I'm getting married, all of a sudden I have self-control. Life doesn't work like that. Don't lie to yourself. You need to know that your flesh will still remember its lifestyle of fornicating with whoever it wants and whenever it wants. Flee from fornication. Flee from adultery. If the thought comes, run. If the opportunity to commit fornication or adultery comes, don't begin to sing praise and worship songs in that situation. 
run. If you are tempted, run. If you know the kind of damage adultery and fornication will cause to your life, if you know the number of problems that are not yours that you will be carrying all around, you will never let that thought of adultery or fornication stay in you. Destinies have been destroyed. Don't give in to that spirit. Don't allow it to push you. Jesus said thinking about it is a sin. Yes, it is. But if it grows beyond that thought and you refuse to destroy it, you will get into problems that will make you regret it. Jesus looked and saw that committing adultery always starts from the heart, and people allow the sin to stay long in their heart. It would be better if that sin is not even in your heart at all. Jesus had to tell them that having the thought of adultery makes them become an adulterer. What is this saying to you? Kill that thought in you. The reason why many people choose to stay on the level of adultery in the heart is that they are afraid of getting caught. They know the consequences of this sin, they know what it will do to their image, they know how it can destroy their lives, and they still allow the thought to remain in them. If you have the thought of adultery in your heart right now, if there is someone who has made themselves available for the devil to use to drop the seed of adultery in your heart, you need to know that you must act against that thought before it gets you into trouble. If you don't do that, one day, you will stand up and say, since Jesus said those things that have thought in them have sinned, why can't you act on it and just know that you've been sinning all along? I want to tell you to destroy this thought. Do you think if Joseph had this kind of thought in his heart, he would not have slept with his master's wife? One day, the devil will make the temptation so close that you will get the chance to commit adultery physically. If you have not destroyed the thought in you, you will fall into temptation. Joseph did not sit to think about this woman's offer. He did not say he would think about it. Joseph made his stance clear in that situation. He was not afraid of what the outcome might be. He did not care what people might say, but he rejected the offer. Genesis 39.9 KJV There is none greater in this house than I. Neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? This is the statement of someone who doesn't have the thought of adultery in his heart. This is why Jesus wants you to destroy that thought. He wants you to stop committing adultery in your heart. Jesus does not want it to make it into your heart, let alone acting it. You don't need to stop it. You need to clean your heart and ask God to create in you a clean heart. There's another person who did not give the reply of Joseph, but went straight into that sin. That is Reuben, the first son of Jacob, slept with his father's wife. For Reuben to do this, he must have had the thought. Reuben did not kill that thought. Maybe he also thought that if he sinned in his heart, then why not just act it? This action landed Reuben a great curse from his father. There are always negative things coming out of adultery or any form of sexual immorality. There is no escape from the consequences of these things. You cannot run away from the negative impact. David tried to run away from the impact after he slept with Bathsheba. He prayed, he wept. He did everything but the consequences of adultery or sexual immorality came on him. Have you already committed this act and you think you are safe because your partner hasn't caught you? Are you enjoying sexual immorality because no one has caught you? You are destroying yourself. I will tell you what will happen to you in the physical and in the spiritual when you commit adultery. 1 Corinthians 6, 16 What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. David said you don't know that if you sleep with anyone, most importantly, outside of your marriage, you have become one with them? I don't care what you want to call them. They are good people they are prayerful, or they are just nice. I don't care. You have joined yourself with them both physically and spiritually. This is a message people don't like to hear, but it is the truth. The wonderful thing about God is that regardless of how many times you committed adultery or fornication with, God can and will forgive you if you repent of your sins. You are not doomed to hell. You have not committed an unforgivable sin. You are not going to hell cry out to the Lord. If you have the thought in you now, it is never too late to get rid of it. 
Don't give yourself up to committing it physically, but ask God to create in you a clean heart and renew the right spirit in you. Ask Jesus to forgive you for the evil thought. Ask him to forgive you for the sins of adultery in your heart and make sure you are not pushed into committing it. If you have committed adultery physically, God did not say he will not forgive you. Jesus did not say he will reject you if you come back to him. Look, that your marriage that adultery has destroyed, Jesus can still rebuild it if you believe. You need to run away from adultery. You need to run from fornication. You need to pray very tough prayers to break the bond that is between you and those you have committed adultery with. You need to destroy the connection that is making demons have access to you. You need to open the door of your life to Jesus before it becomes too late.